Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBus Central. Today we're going to take a look at Reborn OS in what I believe is probably the easiest operating system for somebody that's first making the move to Arch. But before we get started, please don't forget to like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. When you go to Reborn OS's website, which is RebornOS.org, I'll be sure to include that link in the description below. This is the screen you're met with. You've got some sections up here. You've got home, downloads, about us, support, which you can get on their Discord, their forum, their wiki, or their status page. Then news, donate, feedback, and then, of course, do you want it in English, Netherlands, Deutsch, Espanol? And then you can download or get more details here. And as you scroll down their web page, first thing that pops up is the most advanced installer ever. And this is probably one of the reasons I really love this operating system. Because you always hear people tell you, if you don't know how to use the terminal, stay away from Arch. I disagree with that. When I first came to Arch, I didn't use the terminal because I was so used to dealing with like the Ubuntu's and the Linux Mints and things like that. But you can learn the terminal. On their installer, you get to pick from 13 different desktops and window managers, more than 30 optional features, worldwide mirrors, and it's made for you with you. And then you can go down and they have easy graphical solutions for your package manager, your kernel manager. We'll go over that in just a second. And then nearly unlimited customization. You can pick from 13 desktops, friendly community. It's a rolling release, so you'll get updates when there's Arch updates that come out. And then, of course, the latest Reborn OS news. So what I'm going to do real quick is we're going to leave their web page and go over to the desktop. So if you download Reborn OS, throw it on a USB, or throw it into a virtual machine and boot into it, this is the screen you're met with. As you can tell, it's the budgie environment, which is based on GNOME. And right off the bat, you've got a single panel. You've got your background right here. And out of the box, if you right-click and change background, you only get one background to change to but once you install it i'm pretty sure you get more that are there so no big deal i'm going to go ahead and close out of that but first thing i truly want to show you is the welcome screen now it doesn't boot up by itself you have to open it but if you want this to pop up when you boot all you got to do is come down here and click show it startup and that way when it starts up it's right there you've got a lot of great tools right here on documentation, you can get access to their website with one click. All you got to do is come down here and click on it, and their website pops up for you. Nice, quick. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And then, of course, you've got the Reborn OS Wiki. If you click on that, it pops up with a lot of information that could be helpful to you, especially if you're just now coming to Reborn OS. And then if for some reason you can't find the answer to your question there, you can zip on down to the Arch Wiki which pops up on the main page, and then you can go look for some answers to your questions there. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then service status. This is something I really like because it shows right here. It shows you their website, and it shows you the last five, six, seven days. They've been up 99.9% .9 of the time, and then when you scroll down, it shows you the repositories that are consistent. And then, of course, the ones that are having issues that have had downtime. And that's no surprise for SourceForge. A lot of people know when you download or go to SourceForge, it takes a while sometimes. So it's nice to know these other repositories up here are solid and you don't have to worry about anything. And then their forum is up 99.9. .9, and then Tuxbot Discord and then their wiki. So this kind of just gives you information about their places to download and their information pages. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you come over to support. You've got their Discord server, their forum, their Facebook page, and Twitter. And then contribute. If you want to send them feedback or donate to the project, you can. If you want to help out with the project, you can. And then about us. So those are your links. Now you've got utilities. And it just basically states, Reborn OS believes in offering choices without bloating the user system. Consistent with this philosophy, most of the application offered under utilities do not come pre-installed. So you just click OK, and then you've got Install, Uninstall Program, which is PayMac, Stacer, which is a system monitor, hardware info. You can download that if you want. Disk usage, edit repositories, manage kernels, system backup, customize your grub, system cleaner, refresh Pac-Man mirrors, or disk management. So you have utilities that are right there. 
you could click on install and uninstall and it says pay mac aur is not installed do you want to install it i don't want to show you that yet because i want to show you the install program so i'm going to go ahead and close out of this what we're going to do now is go over to the reborn os installer which I think is a bright light of this operating system. Now when it pops up, it's gonna show you something really familiar that you're used to seeing in other Linux distributions. It's gonna say try it or install it. What we're gonna do right now is click on install it. And the first page that pops up is pretty self-explanatory. You just have to pick your language. So we're gonna go English, go up here to the arrow, click next. And then right here, it'll tell you for best results, please ensure that this computer has at least eight gigabytes of available storage plugged into a power source connected to the internet. CNG is up to date and there are no temporary packaging issues. So let's go to the next page. Right here, you just pick your country. I'm gonna go ahead and pick English, United States. Click next. And then right here is where you pick your zone. So you go over here, pick your zone, click America. I'm gonna pick a region. Let's go Chicago and click next. And then right here, it's going to ask you to select your keyboard layout. Mine is already pre-selected, so I'll go ahead and click Next. And then right here is where the fun begins. This is where you're going to pick your desktop environment. Default, out of the box, it has the Budgie on top of the GNOME 40. You can come over here. You can pick Budgie, Cinnamon, Cutefish, Deepin, GNOME, i3, KDE, LXDE, LXQT, Mate, Openbox, Regolith, Yukai, and XFCE. Let's just say for all practical purposes, I'm going to go with KDE, so I'll pick that and go next. Then right here, it's going to ask what your feature selections are going to be. Do you want to add accessibility packages, useful packages for individuals who are blind or visually impaired? You could add those if you want. Applications to perform system maintenance, common applications to perform system maintenance on Linux. If you wanted those, you just click on that. Arch user repository, we're going to go ahead and install that. Bluetooth support, if you have Bluetooth or you're using this on a laptop, you'd want to check that. So let's go ahead and pick that. Do you want to use the Chromium web browser? If you do, you can check that. I'm not going to check it right now because I'm not actually installing. I'm just showing you the options that you have. Common photo editing programs for Linux. If you wanted those, you just click. Common video editing programs for Linux. Go ahead and click those. If you want to use Dropbox, just click on it. Firefox Developer Edition, we have Install Firefox, you've got Free Office, is a full featured Office suite, if you wanted to install that you could. Google Chrome, do you want to use the actual Google Chrome browser? You could come over and check that if you wanted to. Hardware Analysis, it's an easy application for extensive hardware analysis, if you wanted to add that you could. Kernel, LTS version, long term support Linux kernel and modules, if you want those available for you to be able to use, all you got to do is click over here. LibreOffice, if you wanted to use it. Megasync, which is an awesome cloud platform. I use it. I've had it for over three years and have 50 gigabytes of storage on it. And it comes in real handy. If you're using Mega, you can download that and it will be ready to go once it's installed. Only Office desktop editors. Opera web browser. Popular games for Linux. Do you want to download the popular games for Linux? Just come over here, click on that, and it would download them. Power saving tools geared specifically for laptops. If you're using this on a laptop, I suggest you check that. Printing support. Q on notes, your notes on your hard disk and your own cloud. Realtek, if you have a laptop that has a Realtek Wi-Fi adapter, you can come over here and click on that. Redshift, color temperature adjuster based on local time. Basically, it lightens and darkens your screen depending on what time of day it is. Run Windows programs on Linux. Do you want to do that? Wine and stuff like that? Just click on that. Spotify, Steam plus Play on Linux. Are you a gamer and you want to be able to play your games? Come over here, select that. Vivaldi Web Browser, you can select that if you'd like to. VLC, WPS Office. And then, of course, you could also say Show Advanced Features. Do you want to go with the Nautilus File Manager? Do you want to go with Nemo? Spell Check, do you want to have Spell Check on your system? Support for Firewire devices. And then Wallpapers. Do you want to change wallpapers every day? You could click on that and you would have a new wallpaper every day. Windows sharing, SMB, you could go over here and click that on and it would download it as well. And then once you have all those selected, you would go ahead and arrow for next. And right here it's going to tell you it is recommended to use an additional cache. This installer needs to download a ton of packages from the internet. 
Right here, you could set a cache partition if you wanted to. You don't have to, but if that's something you want to try to do, go for it. If not, you are safe just to leave this on none. You'll be fine. Generally, 99.9% .9 of the time, you won't have an issue. And even if you did have some kind of issue, it's the initial install. You could always reboot and just start the install process over. As many times as I have installed Linux, I think I've experienced this issue one time in 13 years. But this tool is there if you need it. Then you're going to go ahead and click the next arrow. Right here is how you would like to proceed. Do you want to adjust mirrors? Do you want to leave the mirror lists alone? Or do you want to manage your own mirror list? You can come down here and pick ones that you don't want and leave specific ones on or off. That's up to you. I would just leave it alone myself. But if you have a specific way you want to do that, they give you that option before install. Then you click next. Now you can come here, you can erase the disk and install Reborn OS, or you can choose exactly where Reborn OS should be installed. Anybody that's used install programs, you're used to this. If you're somebody that likes customizing your partitions, of course, by all means, come down here and choose exactly. For this video, I'm just going to say we're going to leave it at erase disk and install Reborn OS. Then click next. And right here, it'll say, warning, this will overwrite everything currently on your drive. Select the drive we should use to install, and then click above to start the process. Basically, right here, you would select your drive, but because I'm in VirtualBox, it doesn't give me a choice. And then if you want an encrypted password, put your password in here, confirm it here, click Next. So I will go Troy, computer's name, Troy, pick username, Troy, oh, I got to use small, Troy, Super secret password. Oh, password's too short. There we go. Require password. Click next. And then right here, it would give you a breakdown of the installation summary, just saying we're installing here. These are the packages we're downloading, and we're good to go. It takes about five to ten minutes. You reboot. You have an Arch system on your PC. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. But that is definitely one of the reasons I love Reborn OS is because of the installer. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a few things that come with it out of the box. You've got a single panel down here, date, time, you've got your battery power, sound. Come down here. Let's go ahead and open up a terminal. I want to show you how lightweight this really is. If I remember correctly, it should be under 600 megabytes. So we're going to check out top. And right now, I have about 3 gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine. We're sitting at about 590 megabytes used at rest with the terminal open. So that's pretty lightweight, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Then if you come back down to the bottom, you have Firefox. You have your files. Let's go ahead and open that up. And as you can see, it's just a basic file manager. You've got your usual suspects over here. you got your home folders right here. It's just light, fast, and stays out of your way. So let's go ahead and close that. Let's go look at some applications. You've got Advanced Network, Arch Linux Kernel Manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And right now, because we are looking at an ISO that's been downloaded from their website, we are presently on 5.14.12.arch1-1. That's your local version. Now, the one in the repo is 5.15.12.arch1-1, which means when you install it, that is going to be the kernel that you're running. Now, if you wanted to manage your kernels, you could come over here, and let's say you get an update. These will refresh once it's installed, and you've got the Linux, you've got the Linux long-term support, you've got the Linux Zen kernel, and then you've got the Linux hardened kernel. Let's say you get an update. It includes an update with a kernel, and for some reason, Bluetooth quits working on your laptop. You can zip on over here, go to Linux, pick the kernel prior to the one you just installed, click Select, it will reinstall that kernel and everything should go back to working for you no problem. So this is just an area where you can come over and kind of tweak the kernel and keep your machine going if you should have a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Come back down here. Archive manager, Bluetooth manager, videos, e-links, disks. You've got a decomp editor. You've got your system monitor. And then, of course, you've got settings. If you open up settings, you have everything in here from network, Bluetooth, applications, online accounts, if you want to set those up, whether they be Google, Microsoft, Facebook, mouse, touchpad, displays, removable media, and then of course about, you know, at present, we're using Reborn OS, 64-bit, GNOME version 40.40, windowing system is Wayland, virtualization is Oracle. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. 
Then we come back down here. You've got your system monitor, CMake, screenshot tool, firmware, hardware locality. And then you've got image viewer, NVIDIA server, of course. Then you've got PACE. Let's open up PACE. I like this tool. This just basically breaks down what repositories you're presently using. You're not using the testing. You're using the Reborn OS, the core, the extra. You're not using the community testing. You are using the community. But you can come in here and turn these on or off, however you want to set it up. Then you've got options. You can change your root directory if you'd like. Architecture, clean method, GPG directory. You can come in here and adjust these all you want. If you know what you're doing, this makes things a lot easier. If you don't know what you're doing, leave this alone. And then, of course, your mirror list. Let's say after you install it, there's mirrors that aren't working for you. You can just come over here and shut them off. You don't need them anymore. Just pick them, shut them off, and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then back down to the bottom, you've got Pulse Audio Volume Control, Polari. You've got TLP UI. Let's open this up. If you're installing this on a laptop, this is a place you definitely want to come to maximize that you've got general audio you can come in here and adjust sound power save on ac if you want that to be on you can turn it on or off sound power save controller you can turn that on or off and then over here you can adjust these to save power when you're on battery graphics because i am in a virtual box it's not recognizing my nvidia card i could come in here and actually turn my nvidia card off so it wouldn't be draining my battery now if i went to playing games or something like that i can come back over here switch it on i'll be good to go but you can adjust everything network pcie processor the radio radio device wizard usb thinkpad battery you can come in here and adjust this to where you get better battery life on your laptop and then once you do that, as you start using it, you can come over to statistics and it'll have the statistics and you can come in here and say, OK, I can fine tune and adjust this to make my battery life even better. So that's TLP. Let's go ahead and close out of that and then open this back up. And then, of course, if you're going to stay with GNOME or GNOME with the budgie, you open up tweaks. You've got the GNOME tweaks over here. You can change everything from appearance, fonts, keyboard and mouse, startup application, what your top bar does. Window title bars, windows, workspaces, that gives you those options. And that pretty much is Reborn OS in a nutshell. My opinion, it's one of the easiest ways to start using Arch Linux. But what do you think? Is it something you might download, throw in a USB, put in a virtual machine, and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor today. Like, subscribe, or follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links will be in the description below. Thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.